Oh, yeah, I, I I see it just like you do, you know, with the, all the churches, you know, that, that you've been in, talked to pastors, you've been around and, you know, uh, I think churches are, you know, they're, they're doing the best, absolute best they can to just listen to the spirit of God and, and, and do what he says uh, when it comes to that. But you're absolutely right is we ha- we have to we have to stop focusing so much on ourselves. Right. It's it's that comfort that breeds complacency you know, that, that really stumps multiplication and discipleship, you know, when it comes to that. But when you, even in the story of uh, the Samaritan woman, when you look at that story, you know, here's this woman who is broken, who is messy and Jesus, you know, in, in that uh, encounter with that woman, Jesus went to her on purpose. This, this wasn't a, a chance encounter, right? And so we see Jesus purposefully walking into the mess. And uh, it reminds me of, it reminds me when my daughter was young, she had, uh, she'd gotten sick one night and she was young, like still in a crib, kind of, kind of young, you know, probably a year and a half older, maybe two years old or so, and had gotten sick to her stomach and, you know, just made a mess, you know, in, in the crib. And of course, uh, I was on night duty. Uh, my daughter uh, was trained by my wife really well to call for daddy when the lights were out. And so, uh, so I get up and I go and I check on her and there she is. She, she's in the mess, right? She's, she's in the mess that she's made and, and there she is. And so as a father and uh, as any father would do, hopefully, is I picked my daughter up and I got her out of the mess and I, I helped clean her up. And, you know, get her, you know, settled in. But what I didn't do is I didn't look at her and throw her a towel as a two year old and say, now you clean yourself up. And when you clean yourself up, I'll come and help you. You know, and so that's what that's what Jesus does. And we we forget that sometimes is that Jesus runs right into the mess. He's always right into the mess. And as Christ followers, as those who reflect him. You know, I, I feel like that is our calling is to go Absolutely. into the mess. It's not to throw somebody a towel and say, hey, Philip, you clean yourself up. And when you get everything all nice and neat and tidy, then I'll come and help you. No, yeah, it's we true. get down into the mess. That is exactly right. Years ago, I was preaching in Scotland. I learned to preach on the streets. That's where I began preaching. And uh, we had a tent in a town called Fraserburgh, just up the coast from where I live. Or I used to live. And I was, the, I was the song leader and the preacher and the, the, the guy that welcomed folk at the, at the tent door. And just before church started, maybe there's four people in the whole tent and I was discouraged. So I thought, well, I'm going to go up and look one more time to see if anyone else is coming. And as I did, it was a, a drizzly, in Scotland we call it drich, it was a drich night. That mist that goes through all your clothes and was falling and it just added to my depression. <laughs> and uh, I looked and I saw this car coming up the street quite fast and it came to a screeching halt across from the tent and I'm looking at them and thinking well thank God someone else is coming and out of two doors came a mom and a dad and they grabbed this little kid that we found maybe four I guess and they ran towards me and as they ran towards me I remembered that the mouth of the tent had become muddy all the grass had been worn away by us going out and in and now the rain had come into the into this soup and it was like, we, in Scotland, we, we call it dubs. If there's any of my Scottish friends who are laughing at me right now, but it was dubs. And uh, so I stepped out and I says, oh, be careful, be careful. Watch the, and as I, I began to say dubs, the wee boy's foot stuck in a piece of grass and he slipped out of his mom and dad's hands and did a dive straight into the dubs, splat. And I went, dubs. <laughs> and this kid, like he was stealing third base, slid on his nose to my feet. Well, his mom wasn't exactly the happiest soul I've ever seen in my life. And she started to stomp her feet in the soaking wet grass. And she's looking down at the back of her son, who is covered in chocolate from the head to the foot, just all the way up. And she says, what are you doing down there? What are you doing down there? And the kid turned around. It was one of those moments. So I, I'll never forget. He turned around and looked up at his mom with his face covered in mud. And he said... I'm getting up. I'm getting up. And our calling in life is if we fall, the sin is not in the falling. The sin is in the lying down. And God has called us to go and rescue those that have fallen 
in the dubs and are messed up and don't know what to do with their lives. They're easier to save and reach than someone that's self-righteous and knows all the answers. There's the problem person to find to get them turned around. But I found in my life that th those that are lost know they're lost and they're waiting for someone to come and say, hey, listen, I know a friend who cares and his name is Jesus and he can lift you up out of the dubs you're in and the mess you're in. And uh, we, we've got to stop throwing towels at people. That's so profound, Bobby. Tremendous.